In today's video, we're taking a look at how to dehydrate meat easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do everything that we use on the video, we're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, that does help us out a lot, thank you. So you woke up today, and you got the cravings to have something leathery, rubbery in your mouth, and eat it. Wrong episode, that's the other channel. I mean, beef jerky or dehydrated meat. Don't worry, here at the Statabox team, we've got your back. Three doors down, not twice, and we're not there. But don't worry, a back is a back. And this technique will work for any kind of meats. So the first thing that you're gonna need is yourself. The second thing that you're gonna need is something to dry the meat. And that could be an air fryer, that could be an oven, that could be a dehydrator, or even old school in the sun. It might take a little bit longer, but we salute you. No matter which utensil you use, the technique is going to be the same. The third thing that you're gonna need is a cut of meat. In this particular case, we're using beef. And we're using USDA Choice Eye Round Roast, which goes around three and a half pounds to four and a half pounds. Now that we hit all the data points, the first thing that we wanna do is place our meat in the freezer for about 20 to 45 minutes. This is going to harden up the meat and make it a lot easier to slice it in thinner slices and make this process a lot enjoyable. Now that we tortured our victim, I mean that we verify that our meat is dead, I mean now that we firmed up our victim, I mean our beef, we're ready for the next step. We're gonna go ahead and clean up our meat, remove any fat, gray skin, or even skin, depending on the kind of meat that you chose. This is going to make the dehydrating process a lot quicker. Now that we have our meat cleaned up, we're ready for the next step. And that is to slice the meat to the thinnest slices your sword can handle. This is where you show the world how thin you can go. Having a sharpened sword, I mean a knife, will help you achieve this goal. If you have an electric slicer, you can go ahead and use that as well. But if you want to avoid having to slice it yourself, you can always ask the butcher or buy the meat pre-sliced. Just remember, if you buy pre-sliced, the thick the longer is going to take. Now that we got our victim to give us the information, I mean, now that we got our meat sliced as thin as we could, and we know you got it done, because in meats, you're the guy, girl, both or none, that they call when the meats are needed. Now we're ready for the seasoning process. And this is basically to your heart's desire. You can do a wet brine or a dry rub. In this case, we're gonna go the easy route of doing a dry rub. We're just gonna sprinkle some salt, some pepper, and some garlic powder to taste. And we're gonna make sure we do this on both sides. If you wanna level up, you can always marinate this in barbecue sauce, soy sauce, teriyaki sauce, or any of your favorite marinade. One season, because the meat is so thin, you don't even have to wait for it to pick up flavor before placing it to dehydrate. But we like to leave it for 20 minutes on the refrigerator to pack that one two punch of flavor before we place the dehydrate. If doing a marinate, you can leave this for a couple of hours or even overnight. What we wanna make sure is that after we wait it for that amount of time to pack the flavor, we wanna pat it dry before we place it to dehydrate. Now that the meat got the massage of their life, now it can happily move on to its new vessel. So no matter if you're using an air fryer, a toaster oven, the regular oven, or a dehydrator, what you wanna do is space them out, not have any meat on top of each other, preferably use a mesh rack, or if using a pan and you have a cooling rack, you want to place it on top of it so the airflow can move all around. Because remember, the meat is wet from the massage, I mean wrong episode. What we're looking for is for all the liquid inside the meat to basically evaporate and dry out. So that's why air circulation is key. So if your oven, toaster oven, air fryer has a convention function or a fan, using this will make the process a lot quicker. And we want to set our temperature to 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 71.1 Celsius to a maximum of 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 73.8 Celsius for depending on the amounts of racks that you're gonna place on your oven, three to six hours. In some cases, if you're placing a lot of meat and let's say like in this case, up to three racks, it can take up to seven or eight hours. So our maximum goal is to get the biggest tip from our hotel guests, which means the faster, the better. So tip number one, that 
that we like is when we see a lot of condensation on the glass or if using an air fryer at the 40 or one hour mark, we like to open it a little bit and close it to let the steam come out. Our second tip, if you notice the glass is very wet, we like to dry it with a towel to make everything in there drier because the last thing you want is to steam your food. Our third tip, every two hours, we like to rearrange the rack so they could get a more even dry out. As you can see at our three hour mark, you can already see the meat drying out. And now here's our six hour mark and many would leave it up to here, but we like to give it that extra hour to the seven hour mark so we can get that reddish brittle, break it with one finger beef jerky. But remember, this is the most scientific process of all time, AKA eyeballing it until you notice it has reached your desired doneness and consistency. And also remember the less racks you have, the faster you would get the job done. So having one rack, you can get this in three hours, two racks, maybe four or five, three racks, six hours. And remember the smaller the cooking vessel, like an air fryer, the faster you can get that done because it's less air to move around. And now you've done it. You broke the meat. I mean, you can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. All around the verses, they're gonna call you the meat girl, guy, both or none of the planets. Don't forget, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone on the Satterbox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching. And here's a link to our latest video.